Hello and welcome to Billy Ho Sports. This week is a big week in uh, the city of brotherly love. We're heading up to Parks Racetrack. We have the $1 million Pennsylvania Derby. Going along with that, we have the return of Torpedo Anna going in the cotillion. So I'm going to have preview videos for both of those today. Uh, also coming soon is uh, some early Breeders Cup Classic Contenders videos and uh, previews of that nature. So be on the lookout for that. Thanks for joining me. Viewer support, always very important to me. So please be sure to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button while you're at it. Uh, comments are always welcome. Tell me your early leans on uh, either race, Cotillion or Pennsylvania Derby. We're going to start with the Penn Derby. Then next video will be the Cotillion. So let's get started. Okay, race number 12 is the Cotillion, the grade one purse $1 million for Phillies, three-year-olds. Torpedo Anna, obviously going to be the overwhelming favorite, big-time chalk. You can see the 10-point difference on prime power. So we're going to start with number one, Power Squeeze, a favorite of mine. Had this 6-1 to one winner on the Alabama grade one. I really liked it. Uh, won a head bob versus the favorite Candied. And was uh, just a real, real good fighter. Uh, stays up close to the pace when, when she needs to, and then presses and stalks and closes well. Obviously, the Kentucky Oaks wasn't her day like it was many others. Then actually was third behind Torpedo Anna, was six links clear of the fourth place horse. So Leslie uh, Leslie's Rose was second in that race. So not a bad effort, earned a 94 speed rating. Then came back and won by a nose in the Del uh, Delaware Oaks over a horse that's in this race. We'll just, excuse me, we'll discuss here in a little bit. So Power Squeeze is a horse that I like. I ran a board. Scalable is from the Todd Pletcher barn. Another one, I back when I visited Stephen Foster Day in June, obviously it was a, not the, not the uh, favorite, but it was almost three to one scalable. I, I had that winner as well, which was a very nice uh, on the way to a very good day for me that day. Then came back and won the Monmouth Oaks. Just defeating Gunsong, who's in this race, was a really, really uh, strong effort. She's a stalker as well and improving. She had her best Brisnet speed figure of 96 next out. So interesting horse. Paco Lopez aboard. Now, number three, Tarifa. We have some interesting discussions on X uh, amongst some of the other cappers out there about the horse that defeated Tarifa Fibber, who I'll have in a video on this weekend's running at Churchill Downs this weekend, uh, defeated, ran right by Tarifa. This was Tarifa's first off the layoff since the Kentucky Oaks, where she was just no factor whatsoever. Keen early, she just didn't, probably didn't like the muddy. I mean, we got a lot of rain that day. It was very sloppy sealed. So she probably just got a bunch of uh, muddy water kicked in her face and she didn't like it very much at all. So, uh, you know, being out in front in the slop in the Rachel Alexandria was no problem for her. She didn't mind that. But a lot, a lot more horses in the Kentucky Oaks. Audubon Oaks, she should have won, but was run down. I don't know if Dro was on, on his game that day. He sometimes, he's hit and miss sometimes, in my opinion, 32% trainer beaten favorite, though, with Brad Cox. Gets Flavia and Pratt back aboard again where he rode her in the in the Fairgrounds Oaks and Rachel Alexandria to victories. So could be looking at a bounce back. I don't really know what to think of this uh, young filly so far, sired by Bernard, Bernardini, but I guess we'll have to look. We'll see, if, see how Fibber does this weekend at Churchill and then compare to what she does here at Park Saturday. So... On to Everland, and that is a closer sired by Arrogate. Hasn't found her groove since the fifth place in the Kentucky Oaks. Her recent defeat in a 50K optional claiming doesn't look real promising to me. I'm going to pass. This was the one that ran second by nose to power squeeze. Uh, Sidamara, Judamont Farms, 
Bill Mott, Jose Ortiz. Two wins previous, lightly raced, unraced at two. So a bit of a wild card, so to speak, but improving uh, 94-91. Nice 103 late pace coming home here. So could factor into this race as far as we know. Uh, didn't re really break her maiden until April, her second out. So, you know, late bloomer. Uh, sometimes these horses begin to catch up in this time of the year with the, the other horses that were out earlier on. Now, here we go. Thor, Pito, Anna, Kenny McPeak, and Brian Hernandez are back. We all saw her blow them out in the Oaks, the Acorn, the Coaches Club, American Oaks. And then the big 107, I was so impressed. I used her underneath because I wasn't going to be the idiot that didn't play Torpedo Anna in a, you know, in a kind of exacta trifecta kind of thing. But uh, I just didn't, uh, didn't quite get there all the way. But she really closed well running that 99, coming home and almost caught fierceness going a mile and a quarter. So she's backing up to a mile and an eighth, which is her jam, where she's just dominated the last several races. You know, it's just, you know, aside from some un unforeseen trip trouble, she's going to roll again, most likely. So now we have Gun Song. Next up, Wire to Wire Victory at Parks and the Catherine Sophia, uh, Black Eyed Susan Winter, daughter of Gun Runner. It's going to attempt to keep pace with the favorite but unfortunately you can see the, the speed ratings i mean she she can probably keep up early on if she runs like she did in the acorn but you can see she couldn't keep pace then so i don't think that she's going to be able to do so now and this was this was probably the wild card here is number eight mystic lake won the charlestown oaks going seven furlongs easily going away i don't think this I don't know if distance is going to be a problem. You can see she, one time she ran eight and a half furlongs at Woodbine, finished third, could not hold, uh, so but lasted for third. Then one going seven furlongs, mile on the turf, not so much, one at seven, one at six, one at seven. Hasn't been two turns since she was two. So I don't know if she's going to get the distance, but I hope she stays in the race because I hope she can provide some of this top end 100, 102 speed that she can try to hang and put some kind of pressure on Torpedo Anna and challenge her to victory. So like I said, 46 races at eight and a half, you got 50% early speed win rate, 37% wire rate. I mean, obviously Torpedo Anna, this is kind of similar to what the way I see it. And so we'll go ahead and finish out. And I do have a little bit better idea on selections in this one. So let's uh, see what we got. Okay, favorites get beat all the time, but this is no ordinary favorite. Torpedo Anna proved she's good as any three-year-old in the country. I posted on X. I thought she should have gone ahead. She'd have been a favorite in the Penn Derby. I don't know why. I mean, I, I can't say I know why. I mean, it would have been just for pride's sake, the same amount of purse, I guess. But this is going to be a much easier spot, obviously. So power squeeze, Sitamara, scalable, most likely to run, try to run down Torpedo Anna. And if Mystic Lake can maybe put some early pressure on her, maybe she'll be a little tired down the stretch, but she's going to be pretty fresh coming in. So it's really going to be hard to beat the five-star play of the day, probably one to five or worse, uh, Torpedo Anna. Hopefully we can get some kind of odds underneath on one of the threes, uh, you know, bet maybe a cold as actor or something, or just watch the race for fun, which is what I might end up doing anyway. So that will be your preview for the 2024 Cotillion. Remember to sub to the channel, hit that like. More videos to come. We're going to do some Churchill Downs racing. We got some few stakes to cover over there at my home track. And I also got in the works some preview races for some of the Breeders' Cup coming up soon. So thanks for being here. Until next time, this is Billy Ho signing off.